Sean Prescott. What's he writing to the hospital about? Is this for real? Being in a hospital this long sucks. I just want Rachel to wake up, and then I'll feel better. I owe Frank big time. Can't believe he did that for us. I hope he's okay. Not like I can do anything about it in one way or the other. And what about Damon? Is, is he gonna come after us? I actually feel better knowing that James Amber is on his case. Ugh, that's weird. Mom brought so many of these home when Dad died. Not a single one described how I felt. Guess the citizens of Arcadia Bay aren't feeling so generous. Is that Mikey and Drew's dad? I wonder how he's doing. All right then. Thank you. Hi, Mr. North. That's me. And you are? I'm Chloe. You here to see Mikey? Yeah. Well, it was nice meeting you. Likewise. Oh, excuse me. I hope the Norths are going to be all right. Chloe. Hey, you made it. Hey, Chloe. Hey. How's the arm, Mikey? I wish it was the other one. So I could draw and stuff. But other than that, it's just broken. Sweet hair, by the way. I bet you could pull off Sailor Mercury. Uh... <laughs> Thanks. Any news about Rachel? Her mom seemed hopeful. How'd she get hurt? You'll think I'm joking when I tell you, but I'm not. Why? What happened? Rachel was stabbed in the arm by Damon fucking Merrick. Yeah, that's not funny. Shit. You're serious? Fuck that guy. It wasn't because of me, was it? No. Not at all. If, if anything, I... 
I should have thought about what happened with you guys before getting Rachel involved. That's crazy. The whole thing makes me want to just... I swear, if I ever meet that shithead, I'm gonna... What? What are you gonna do when you meet Damon Merrick? Something terrible. Uh-huh. I am. Like... Challenge him to a karaoke battle? <laughs> yeah, that's how we settle things on the street, huh? Okay. Throw dice at him. Criticize his taste in film. Okay. Tell him about a band he's probably never heard of, but should have. Enough! Anyway, we're glad Rachel's okay. Oh, uh, you should hang out here till she wakes up. Rachel's gonna be up soon. Should probably head over when I'm ready. I barely knew Mikey two days ago, and now I feel... kind of protective. Tell Rachel she's gotta come to board game night. Soon. Hey. Can I sign your cast? Yeah, definitely. Hmm, something nerdy. But not too nerdy. There you go. Cool. Tell Rachel she's got to come to board game night soon. Look at that. Wells being nice for a change. Like he's entering into a cartoon contest? <laughs> I hope he wins. <laughs> Steph and Drew aren't leaving Mikey's side. He's lucky to have them. That's cute, I guess. What are you guys doing? I thought you'd never ask. I had to hide our game from the nurse. She thinks it's negatively affecting my mood. Elamon's backed himself into a pretty tight spot this time. He might not make it. Wait a sec. Barb the Elf Barbarian. She can join Elamon in battle. Maybe the two of us together could actually make it out alive. Wait. You're into this nerd shit too? It's a game where I win if I make a crazy shit and act like a badass. So yes. I hate to be such a game master about it, but I'm pretty sure Chloe's character died last time. Oh, yeah. Wait a sec. Didn't you have that anklet of reincarnation in your inventory? Uh, yeah. I totally did have that thing. Holy shit! So you can actually swoop in and save my ass. What do you say? Gotta save Elamon. Right?
we rejoin Elamon as he majestically soars over the traveler's path. He glances over his shoulder, only to discover his pursuers are right behind him. Wait, you can fly? I'm a wizard. Plus, I kind of have to since you cut my feet off last time. Oh, shit. I, I forgot I did that. Sorry. It's cool. Elamon comes around a corner to discover Bard, the elf barbarian, sitting by a fire, roasting squirrels. Uh, <laughs> greetings, powerful Elamon. From whence do you run? Oh, oh, give float. Or whatever. Funny you should ask. I'm being chased by an army of dragonkin. Remember when you killed that jailer and took his key to free the prisoners in the prison camp? <laughs> Turns out you offended their entire clan. And they're after me now. Well, I, I think that was really more of a team effort. You mean when you told that dragonkin that you'd skin him, make a handbag from his flesh, and then carry him around in it? Yeah, that was really a team effort. Your crotch-punching abilities are second to none. Suddenly, dragonkin scouts rush in, clawing you while your backs are turned. Take four damage. You're up first. What do you want to do? I disarm them. They're not carrying weapons. Then I grab the arm of the nearest dragonkin and rip it from its socket. Eighteen? <laughs> okay, you now wield a severed dragonkin arm. What's next? I beat them to death with it. You curl the fingers into a fist and bludgeon them with it swinging the arm with a blind fury until no dragon can remain. Hey, nice one. Don't celebrate yet. You begin to hear the clinking armor of hundreds of dragonkin warriors. The sound grows louder as they grow closer. And this is why I was running. Ah, come on. You can totally take these fuckers down. I just killed six of them. Those were scouts, Chloe. Warriors are four times that hard. Oh. Well, shit. <sighs> Running and living. Yeah, sounds like a plan. You sprint as fast as you can until you come across a fork in the road. One path leads into the mouth of a deep, dark cave. The other takes you into a dense, misty forest. Which way do you go? Can I, you know, feel it out first? Totally. Roll for perception. Ugh. Thirteen? Despite the desolate look of the caves, your elvish senses tell you that something does in fact live inside. Something Unfriendly. That's some um, solid intel. Next, you turn to the forest. Though it seems still, you sense that what's inside is not entirely at rest. Okay, come on. The dragonkin are still behind us. All right. To the forest it is. Let's go. As soon as you enter the shade of the great trees, it becomes eerily silent and very cold. You notice the stones on the ground are arranged in strange patterns, creating huge designs all over the forest floor. I think I know what this is. I follow the stones. The stones lead you to the center of the forest, where you see a mysterious glowing idol upon a golden pedestal. A forest idol? I could use that to regrow my feet. Help me steal it. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Now this is my kind of skill challenge. Awesome. Roll for idol theft. <sighs> Eight. As you approach the idol, you dash your foot against one of the stones and fall face first into the dirt. A bony hand shoots up from the ground right before your eyes. You feel the ground move and jump up just in time for the undead soldier buried there to sit up from his shallow grave. Dirt and pebbles cascade down his fleshless torso. Then, the ground beneath you shakes. Bony, rotting hands shoot up from the ground all around as an entire army of undead warriors rises from their graves. You have disrupted the undead forest an ancient burial ground for fallen soldiers. They surround you now, armed to the teeth, bony faces grinning. Run! Luckily, the undead have a very low running speed. The party flees safely, but the soldiers aren't far behind. You're near the edge of the forest when you run across... Oh shit, is that me? You're gonna play? Yeah, little brother. Pavel, the arrogant gnome bard, joins your party. Gnome bard? That's what she said. Know any firewalk? No, I don't know any of your shitty music. Damn! Why don't you pick on someone your own size? There's probably a squirrel somewhere that you could fight. I don't need violence to solve my problems. I just need the power of music. This is awesome. Fine, but don't slow us down. In the time you've been chatting, the army of undead has caught up to you. The first cohort launches iron spears directly at Elamon. What do you do? I, I heroically jump in front of Elamon, using my axe to block each attack. You block almost every attack, but one makes it through. Take six damage. Hey, thanks. Do you have to be the hero? That's just selfish. The army is still advancing. What do you do next? We can't fight a whole army of them. Not just with a gnome bard as backup. We should run. Doing a lot of running today. Shut up. As you near the edge of the forest, an enormous undead soldier steps into your path. He roars, sending thousands of years of bad breath at you like a wave. Shit. I pick up the bard and throw him like a football, right at the monster. What the hell? Brutal. The small gnome doesn't do much damage, but the beast stops to tear the bard limb from bloody limb. Let's go. Cool. So harsh. His screams follow you. A perfect E flat. As you escape into the meadows. You burst forth into the majestic meadow, horizon to horizon. All you can see is lush, green fields full of birds, flowers, and dragonkin. What? Instead of chasing you, they circle around to set a trap, and you just walked right into it. As the dragonkin ahead prepare to attack, the army of undead arrive behind you. <sighs> We're surrounded and screwed. Ah, uh, come on, Elamon. I'm sure you've got some sweet spell that'll save us. Uh, I do have searing crystal. Perfect! Searing crystal, these fuckers! You don't get it. This isn't just another battle spell. This crystal is like... like dropping a nuke. 
It'll kill everything, including you and me. Actually, you did grab Durgaron's bracer of fire immunity. Whoever wears it would survive. See? Problem solved. <sighs> but there's only one bracer. <sighs> Mikey loves his character. I, I can't just let him get Elamon killed. Elamon, keep the bracer and cast the spell. I'll hold them off so you can survive. It won't work. Look at all of them. I should have never started this quest. I'm too weak. You're... Elamon, freaking wizard of the Third Circle, foremost advisor to King Tiberius, and sworn defender of Avalon. Avernon. Yeah, that. See, you can do anything. Wow, you actually remember all of that? But I've never even used this spell before. What if I roll too low? I believe in you. I know you'll roll high. You're the only party member I've ever had who's actually helped me. I can't leave you behind. You're, like, the most heroic person I know. You help everyone. It's my turn to save you from something. No, Barb, I won't just kill you. You'll kill all of these monsters, too. Think of how many lives you'll be saving by nuking their stupid faces off. But I, I can save everyone. I know I can. Somehow. Come on, dude. If you can't save everyone, you should at least save someone. Save yourself. All right. I'm so sorry, Chloe. Helamon secures the bracer of fire immunity on his wrist. He gives the elf barbarian one last nod, then reaches to the sky. The searing crystal lifts from his hands, floating up into the clouds. You got this, bro. Suddenly, an explosion. Fire arcs outward in a ring. Then the ring begins to spin. Whoa. A quiet stillness encompasses the meadow, as all creatures gaze upward at the swirling flames. Thank you, Chloe. For everything. The flames descend over the meadow, bathing everything in liquefying arcs of infernal chaos. Monsters begin screaming in agony. Bad ass. Chloe, you've got one final moment before your angry elven body is burned away forever. Any last words? I turn to Alamon and say, Thank you. Before the flames burn me away forever. Elamon rolls not to cry. <laughs> I rolled a three. The spell comes to a spectacular climax. Until all you can see is white. Then, all is calm. All is quiet. All is ash. Damn. Congratulations, Alamon. You have completed Revenge of the Dragonkin. That's it? She's dead? And the game's over? Yep. And Elamon's left alone once again. It was fun having a companion while it lasted. Well, what if I make a new character? Wait, really? You want to keep playing? Sure. This is gonna be dope.
That was a pretty intense one. Yeah. Thanks for playing. It always means a lot to Mikey. Seems like the least I could do. Oh, <laughs> those must be from Steph's parents. Mikey's nurses must love this. Hey. Wait up a sec. Sorry I got angry at you yesterday. About the money. You were just trying to help. Uh, don't worry about it. You were in a, a really tough situation. A situation I created. When you said that Damon stabbed Rachel, I kept thinking, I'm supposed to look out for Mikey, not bring this shit into his life. I think you saved us from something so much worse. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks for stopping by. Bye, Chloe. Those guys look exhausted. You mean it's controlled? No, it's completely out. It extinct. Wow. Rachel's mom does not look okay. Hey. Chloe. I can't even express thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm a wreck. I stepped out to get some air. Rachel doesn't need me crying in front of her. Your hair. I almost didn't notice it. Oh. Yeah. It's... It's not a big deal. I bet... Rachel loves it. I can't imagine what I would do if we lost her. Me too. You've grown so close, haven't you? Yeah. It's weird to think we just met a few days ago. When you meet someone who changes everything, you just know. Well, hang in there, Mrs. Amber. I will. Why has my son been assigned to you? I never authorized that he be seen by. I was assigned because Nathan was becoming quite upset. So they sent a psychiatrist. Because my son was upset. Holy shit. Please, Mr. Prescott, your son needs serious psychiatric... My son needs nothing from you. He put down a couple I'm of so relieved that Rachel's awake. At school. I should see her right away. Is all. I'm glad that you're here. Me too, Rachel. 
It really hurts. Shh. The pain will pass. Chloe's here. You want me to stay? No. I'll be okay. Thanks, Dad. I'll come back in a little while. My guardian angel. <laughs> I saw Steph earlier. She says, hey. <laughs> Steph's so cute, but not as cute as you. Stop. I mean it. Rachel, I'm sorry. What? What for? You're here because of me. Because I choked back there in the junkyard. What? Shut up. You were so fierce and I, I just froze. God, I fucked it up. And I'm so sorry. And and you saved my life. You saved my life. I almost lost you. I can't believe I almost- You're not getting rid of me that easy. Good. Happy that your dad's here. I mean, I'm still mad at him for everything he's done. But it felt so good to lean on him. He's my dad, you know? I felt completely safe. Like on Mount Hood. Would you do something for me? Anything. Sarah. The mom. <laughs> it's so weird to say. I'm not even sure what she is, honestly. But <laughs> I think I still want to meet her. I figured you would. I don't even know if she's still in Arcadia Bay. But if she is, will you find her, please? You really want this, don't you? I do, Chloe. I really do. Then, of course, whatever it takes. I bet my dad has her number. Maybe in his office. Our house keys just under the mat. The code is 0722. To your your dad's office? Zero seven two two. Yeah. My birthday. I'll find her, Rachel. And then I'll... I'll tell her how fucking cool you are. Thank you, Chloe. For... Everything.
Uh, hey, Elliot. Hey! Wait, your hair, it's different. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I like it. It's, uh, it's nice. I like your shirt, too. I didn't know you were into dragons. Who the fuck isn't into dragons? A uh, nice balloon, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's from Mikey. Were you just in there? I'm actually here for Rachel. What? Rachel's here? What happened? Uh, she got stabbed by a psycho. Oh my god. Yeah. It was insane. Holy shit. Wait, are, are you okay? I mean, I'm probably not okay, but I can deal with that later. Are you, are you two in some kind of trouble? You can tell me if you are, you know. I won't judge. I'll make sure to keep you posted. Right now, I'm here to take care of Rachel. Chloe! I'm seriously worried about you. Well, don't be. Uh, I mean, you're hanging out with Rachel Amber a lot lately, right? So what? So, obviously something is going on. It's really, it's really not your business, Elliot. Okay, that's fair. Just remember I'm here, okay? If you suddenly need something. Thanks. Anyway, see you around. Yeah. See you around, Chloe. <laughs>